You are about to watch a 20 minute video on the PARS JSON action in Power Automate. This is going to test the limits of your attention span. I would advise you only to watch this if you absolutely love Power Automate. The content inside will show you some really useful things that I had no idea were possible and I'll use regularly in automations that I create. But I mean, you really got to love Power Automate to spend 20 minutes on this. So let's get into it. So in a typical scenario, you might have an action where you are sending an API request to an external service or to SharePoint or to Dataverse, and that is going to bring you back some JSON. What you would often do is take the output of that JSON, of the action rather, and just paste it into a parse JSON action and then use the data from there. So we'll start with that <clears throat> starting point. Um, so we've got our value link here, our value property, and that is the output of it. So quite often what you would do is go into parse JSON, and then the content will be the, I guess it won't be the body. Let's just grab that. It's going to be body and then value. Okay, then this would exploit or expose those values in here. And we could access title, field one, or field two, field three, and field four. The problem is with that is that these field names are not at all meaningful um, and don't relate to what's actually coming through in that data. Um, let's just get that on the screen so we know what we're working with. Yeah, so we've got um, first name, surname, email address, and city. And it'd be nice to have those in here. So let's delete that and grab our schema and come back over to Notepad and paste that in here. So this is a type array, but it would be nice if we knew what it was. So let's add in a title and we'll call this respondent. And just by doing that, instantly this will change what is available in the next step. Not if I don't make it valid JSON. So let's try that again. Now you can see it's changed to respondent title, field two, three, and four but still not particularly useful. I'm just gonna grab that and put it over here so I can see. Okay, so we've got some additional properties and they're all of type string. So let's now give this a title. And this one a title. And we can also give it a description. And let's do the final one. Okay, so let's now copy that in to here. And so now we get a much more usable list of fields. We can take the first name, surname. You see the one where I added the D description? That is also in there. And here we have an item which represents the whole object. And we can just put in city in there and that will of course take us into apply to each loop. So that instantly makes the whole thing much more usable. So the next thing I'm going to do is just add a compose action. <clears throat> I'm going to rename it JSON and I'm going to paste in the JSON that we were working with from here so that we can use this as our input for the parse JSON step. And then we can try out all different kinds of things from here. So 
one of the things that comes up often is that um, a value is expected, but it got null. So first of all, let's just scroll down to our parse JSON step, and we'll see that we have required title, field two, field three, and field four. So they're all in place there. So let's just remove one from the first record and see what effect that has. Okay, so if we go into the past past JSON, required properties are missing from the object field four. So I'm going to say that field four isn't required anymore. And that's now an optional component or property, and that should now work. Okay, so that now works and it doesn't require that field to be present, but it will still parse the JSON normally, but it just won't insist on that item being there. The thing that comes up often is quite often you'll get a piece of JSON through and instead of being populated, it will be, the value will be null. I've put null in there, but <clears throat> it does happen often. So let's see what happens with that. Okay, this time parse JSON tells us invalid type, expected string, but got null. This one comes up all over the place. You see it on the forum all the time. So let's dive in and see how we can fix this using the schema. So let's first of all go back and look at our schema. Um, which field were we looking at? Did I? Yeah, field three. So field three is the email address and type is specified as string. <clears throat> so the first fix to this is to make this an array and you can say string null like that. And so that means the two accepted types for this property are both string and null. And we can go back to here and replace our schema and test it again and I will have made some error somewhere. We don't need that compose. And let's test again. And this will work, but there is a disadvantage to it, which I will show you in a moment. Maybe it won't work. Required properties are missing. Oh, so I've still got that field four in there. Okay. Do that again. Okay, let's test that now. Okay, so this time it took in the null value and the parse JSON step did not fail. But there is a downside. If I edit this flow and add a compose step, we will see that the email address field has gone from the dynamic content as a result of our change. So we can enhance that schema one more time. So if we skip back to the schema, instead of specifying type string or null, we can change it to any of and put in type String, sorry, that's more like it. Type null, got a comma there, get rid of that. So now we're saying any of these types is acceptable and we can use any of for a few more things actually. So I'll show you that. Let's now go back over to here and paste that into our parse JSON step. Now we get the email address back. Okay, so now I'm gonna take our JSON and edit it a little bit. So let's bring it down here, paste it in. And I'm going to add a another field called age and I'll fill some of this in. So we'll say 33. I'm going to 
going to delete the rest of the records for now, just to make this a bit quicker. So we've got three, so we've got three ages added to our data, 33, 12, and 112. So I need to go and update the schema as well. So <clears throat> this is going to be type integer. I will add a description on as well. And this time I'm also going to add a minimum. By the way, you don't often see integer in the Power Automate Pars JSON. It's normally number. Number can be a floating point number. Integer can only be a whole number. So I'm going to say for this, the minimum age has to be 16. I'm also going to set a maximum of 100. So we don't receive any crazy values. Actually, people live a long time these days. Let's say 120. So let's now take this into here and take it over to our Power Automate flow and stick that into the schema and save it. <clears throat> if we test it again now, it should fail. And failure in this case is a good thing because we want to validate the numbers that we're getting in are valid for our use case. So integer 12 is less than the maximum value, minimum value of 16. And if I had changed this one to be 130, this one would also fail. I don't know if we'll see it because it'll only show the first failure. Yeah, integer 12 is less than, the, and also integer 130 exceeds the maximum of 120. But still, we get our nice, we get our age, should get our age appearing here, respondent age, the age of the respondent with our description. Okay. So I'm going to edit our JSON one more time. Let's go back over to here. And this time I'm going to add number of bottles required. And I'm going to say 12, copy that. say 18 here and down here I will say 5 I'm going to change this person's age now so it fits in we'll make them 99 years old and make this 22 years old so I need to add in my number of bottles required and this is going to be Again, type integer description and this time I'm going to use the multiple of clause. I haven't really thought of an instance where I would need to use this, but I'm going to say multiple of six. So let's go over to here and paste that into our parse JSON. Get our paste that into there. Now we can test this. Well, that worked and it wasn't supposed to, so let's go and check what I did in the schema. Uh, okay, it's that. It's multiple of with a capital O. So let's now go back over to here and edit it again. 
Paste that in there. And it should fail because one of the entries is not a multiple of six. But let's just see. Okay. So let's see. Integer five is not a multiple of six. And our last record had number of bottles required is five. So you can see, you can start to build up a schema that verifies your data as it's coming through, which could be really useful, especially if you're using the when a HTTP request is received action to ensure you don't receive the wrong data. So let's go and correct our JSON. We'll just do it here. No, you know what? I'm going to do it here because I keep... Let's set that one to 24. Now we can move on to another part. So let's have a look at the title now. Okay, so the title represents the person's first name. And let's say, for example, our database only accepts a maximum of 25 characters in there. And we wouldn't expect somebody to have a name of less than zero characters. So we'll add some um, additional validation to that. So let's go back over to here. And title is the first name and it's a type string. So we'll add min length with a capital um, L and we'll say three for the minimum length and then max length is going to be so 25 that's what our database takes and then we'll do the same thing for the surname okay so let's now put that into our schema over here And then in our JSON, we'll make someone have a really long surname. That should do it. Let's add a few more in. Okay, so our parse JSON step failed, schema validation failed, and it says error type max length. And this was this one which exceeds the max length of 25. So let's go and correct that JSON now. <clears throat> and we'll see what else we can do. Okay, so the next thing we'll look at is a bit more validation. So I edited this field three, which represents the email address to be null, which was valid, but I'm also just going to put in my name in here, Paul Marana, which would work fine in the schema we've currently got. But if I go and edit the schema again, and I'm going to add in format, I'm going to say email. Let's now grab that. Stick that into our parse JSON and go up and modify. I think we've done that. So let's now test that. Okay, our parse JSON step has failed. And it says string Paul Marana does not validate against format email. There are a bunch of formats you can use. I'll like pop them all over the screen now. So I was going to go on and show you some more examples, but I think you probably get the idea by now. If you want to explore this more, you can go to the JSON Schema website, which I will link in the description of this video. Um, but I really do hope that you found something of use in this video and learned to understand the capabilities of the parse of JSON action a bit more. If you did, um, please leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are or if you found any exciting use cases for this. Um, and I will see you in the next video.